Hey everybody, welcome to the Happy Harvest Homestead. Today I'm going to share with you a very important thing you can do to save your rabbit tree from disaster. But you have to prepare now because when you start having problems, you have missed your opportunity to prepare and you are too late. I'm really surprised more people don't talk about this and that this isn't common knowledge in the rabbit raising community, but everyone who breeds rabbits and has newborn baby rabbits either on their farm right now or they are planning on having babies sometime in the future. Maybe your rabbits are on summer break and they're going to start breeding in the fall again or you're just starting out with rabbits and expecting your first couple litters soon. Please somehow get your hands on some extra fur to supplement your rabbit nests. For those of you who don't know, a pregnant rabbit will build a nest in preparation for giving birth. Usually she'll do this a couple days before she's due. She will take hay and straw in her mouth and line a nest box with it. Then she will pull fur from her own body with her mouth and make a little divot in the middle or back of the nest. And then when she gives birth, her babies will be in the fur, which is in the straw, which is in the nest box, which is in the cage or colony or tractor you have her in. And this specific setup is super necessary for your baby bunnies because when they are first born, they have no hair, they are blind and deaf, so they can't walk around, they can't move, they will wiggle a little bit, but they're newborns and can't take care of themselves at all. So they need a fairly small nest box so they can't accidentally wiggle away from their siblings and get cold by themselves. They need the straw or hay to help keep them warm and absorb the pee they will produce so that will keep them dry and clean. And most importantly, they need fur to keep them warm. Baby bunnies will get cold very easily and that can quickly lead to death. And most of the time, everything goes as normal. Your doe will pull a good amount of fur for her babies and everything goes smoothly. And of course, that's the ideal and hopefully that happens to you all the time. But of course, living in this world, everything isn't perfect. So you have does who Maybe they don't pull enough fur for their babies. Maybe they just had a litter, so their fur hasn't had a chance to grow back from their last litter, so they don't pull enough. Or there's a huge litter of babies and they need extra fur because there's so many of them. Or you have a first-time mom or a bad mom who forgets to pull fur. And in all those cases, your little babies will freeze to death unless you have thought ahead and prepared and saved fur. Let me tell you, you do not want to be in this position. Because number one, you're mad at your mama for not doing the right thing, and you're mad at yourself for not thinking of this earlier, and then you're stressed and scrambling. Oh no, what do I have? What can I use? Can I use towels? Can I use cotton balls? Can I use dog fur? If you haven't thought ahead and you are scrambling, I do have a video ranking um, alternative fur options from like greatest to least. I'll link that up in the iCard and in the description below. But the gist of it is, ideally, rabbit fur is the best fur. So now, today, at this very moment, chances are you do not have a litter that is freezing to death as we speak, and you have at least some time to prepare so that you're not scrambling later. There are three main things you can do to get rabbit fur. Two are really awesome, and one is more like if you're desperate and you can't do anything else. If you have no other options and your mama has just had babies and they're freezing to death, you can take a brush or your fingers and try to hold her down and pull fur from her body. Her fur should be pretty loose because she should be pulling it herself, but you can go in, in her place and pull it from her. Though I suggest wearing gloves and long sleeves as you do this because most meat rabbits are not very friendly and she will not like you doing this and she'll probably scratch you up. And then that'll stress her out and then she could abandon her babies or her milk production could be affected because you're causing all the stress. So that's not really a good idea, but if there's no other choice, then maybe you can try that. I apologize for interrupting this enthralling video, but I want to take this opportunity to announce that my handmade crochet dish scrubbies are now on sale. I have been perfecting this pattern for years, and me, my family, our friends and neighbors all rave about these scrubbies. They are the perfect size to fit in your hand, and they are very bendable, so you can easily clean the nooks and crannies of your dishes and cutlery. Because they are made with 100% cotton yarn, they are very durable and will last for years, and it is super easy to clean and reuse them. 
Each pack includes seven scrubbies, so you can use one each day. Then at the end of the week, take all your dirty scrubbies, put them in a mesh bag, then stick them in your washer and then in your dryer as usual. Then they are all fresh and clean and ready to be used for the next week. The link to my Etsy store is in the description box below this video if you want to check them out. All right, now back to the video. But honestly, the best option for you is saving extra fur from overachieving mothers. Most of the time, mother rabbits will pull just enough fur for their babies, not too much, not too little, that is the ideal. And then sometimes they pull too little or none at all, which is what we've been talking about. But sometimes mother rabbits are amazing and they pull a ton of fur for their babies. And in like the early spring or the fall or the winter when it's either okay temperatures or actually the cold temperatures, this isn't really that big a deal. And you can just leave the fur in with the babies or you can take it out and make sure they just have the right amount. But in like the late spring or the early fall or the summertime, it's actually bad to have a lot of fur in with the babies because it, they can overheat and die of heat stroke. So if you are in a warm part of the year or you just happen to have extra fur that they don't need, then you can take some extra fur from the nest. Preferably it's just been pulled and it's all fresh. It hasn't been peed or pooped on yet, but you take some extra fur and you just stick it in a little plastic bag. And then next time you have an overachieving doe, you take that extra fur and put it in the plastic bag. And over a couple months or years, you have a ton of fur just sitting around. And whenever you have a doe who doesn't pull fur, you just grab your bag, plop some fur in there, and you have just saved an entire litter of babies. And you are not stressed. You feel so confident and proud of yourself for thinking ahead. And you're happy. The babies are happy. The mom is happy. And everything goes wonderfully. But sometimes you don't have overachieving mothers. Or maybe you're a beginner and you don't have any rabbits to start out with, so you don't have any mothers at all. So the other option you have is shaving fur off of the hides of rabbits you just butchered. I know it can sometimes be a pain because your hands are so bloody and you're in the middle of butchering and you're trying to be fast because you have like 20 rabbits to butcher and you only have two hours to do it and you have to rush because they're eating all the food and it's really expensive, but you have all these other projects you have to get to, so you're just trying to get it all out of the way. But if you can take time and grab your scissors or your electric clippers and just shave the fur off the hides, then stick it in a plastic bag. It's basically just like the mom's fur, but just not from a mother rabbit. It's a little bit more work on your part, but it's really worth it in the long run. So if you have an already established rabbitry and you have access to amazing mom rabbits who pull extra fur and access to kits who are being butchered who have hides, then those are two wonderful options. If you're a beginner and you don't have any of those things set up yet, then there are two options for you. Your best option will be finding somebody with an established rabbitry who you can get some of these things from. Maybe they're butchering and you want to go over there and you want to learn to butcher and then help like actually butcher them like you know to contribute to their work and then you also get some fur out of it too or maybe you have a friend who has an overachieving mom and you're like hey could you save me some of that fur and they're like sure but for those who are super desperate i can suggest one other thing that it's honestly really hard and expensive and probably overkill for what you'll need but who doesn't want a super adorable fluffy angora rabbit in their life right I raise Angora rabbits, that's a breed of rabbit, for fiber. They're like the sheep of the bunny world. And so a side effect of that is I have a bunch of fur left over whenever I shear them. And while of course you want to spin the fur and make yarn out of it, sometimes you have to shave them during the summer so they don't get too hot. Or you got lax in your housing and they got all dirty and the fur isn't really worth saving because it's super dirty with hay in it or it's stained with mud or something. And instead of shaving it off and throwing it away, like I used to do for a while, now I shave it off and put it in a baggie and save it for babies. Now, getting an entirely new breed of rabbit who requires constant grooming and care and worry about wool block and a whole host of other wool-related issues is really probably overkill for most people's needs who are just focusing on meat rabbits. But it is technically an option. And I don't know, maybe you already have angoras because you also like fiber. 
or maybe this is an excuse to get another animal that your spouse says no more animals we can't get any more and you can say but we need one more adorable pet because of the baby rabbits they need extra fur and then you can get another animal but anyways now you are equipped with the knowledge you need to save possibly dozens or hundreds of lives in the future by just being a little bit proactive doing a little bit of work now and either saving fur from an overachieving mother's nest shaving fur off of rabbit hides when you butcher them or shaving fur off of an angora rabbit who produces very soft fluffy wool like fur and hopefully next time you have a mother rabbit who doesn't pull enough fur you don't have to stress you don't have to worry you just simply walk over to your rabbit shed open your bag of fur take some plop it in with the babies and it is smooth sailing from there on out well of course hopefully you don't have that problem to begin with but chances are you will someday so, anyways, <laughs> th thanks for watching.